was a three secret Regev um, private key and there was four samples. So how many different ways are there to encrypt uh, a, bit, a single bit one, right? It doesn't matter whether it's one or zero, it's the same answer. Um, so to me, you basically are given all the freedom to choose a subset, right? So how many subsets of the integers one, two, three, and four, right? So how many, how many different S subsets? Are there. That's basically the road to the answer, right? And of course, you can't take a subset. It has to be non-empty. You have to actually use at least one equation. So how many subsets of different equations are there if you have four to choose from, right? And that should leave, each of those will be a, um, uh, a, different, um, a different encryption method, right? It won't necessarily lead to a different ciphertext, but it's a different method you can use. So you expect them all to lead, lead to different ciphertexts. Okay, so Sad says that's, what do you mean by, you don't mean primordial M, right, Sad? So remember, so to, to solve this one, uh, you have to figure out the number of singles, so there's four, right? The number of pairs, the number of, uh, so that, let's see whether this would do it. This should do it, right? Four plus, the, although it's not the one I, not the way I'd solve it, that's kind of a, a different way to do it, but but basically how many uh, pairs are there, how many triples, how many quadruples, and how many singles are there. And when you add them up, you should get, I saw it says, it should add up to 15, right? I actually don't see it as those numbers sad if I were to answer it. So um, I, I see what you're doing in there, but the, the conventional way is to go one, 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 two, one, oops, three, three, one, and one, six four one this is empty so we can't have it so i would actually i would actually say not four plus three plus two plus one although that answer is right right and i know how you're cooking it up the more direct way is this is the number of pairs triples quadruple uh, sorry uh pairs no singles pairs triples and quadruples this totals 15 which is of course what your answer gets okay and is repetition allowed? No, because you're you're picking a subset, right? So if you pick equation two, then it's done, right? So that would be like the integer two. Remember, you have you have four equations, so one, two, three, and four. So you write this as one, two, three, and four, and you have that S must be a subset of this, right? So this is an equation. This is an equation. This is an equation. This is an equation. S must be a subset of one, two, three, four. And there are 15 different subsets there. Okay, yeah, the sum of the combinations is another way to look at it, right? So this would be four choose two, four choose three, uh, four choose, no, four choose one, four choose two, four choose, and four choose four. Okay, yeah. Um, also in this stage of the encryption, does the number of secrets, uh, no, doesn't. Right. That's the interesting thing is it doesn't really the number of secrets will affect how you encrypt, but it doesn't give you any more ability to do more types of encryptions. Right. It's basically the samples, the number of samples that tells you how many different ways there are to incre uh, encrypt a single bit. Right. Either zero or one. OK. Um. So why did I give why did I give you the number of sequence for question two then? Because I just thought it would be a fun parameter to throw in there, right? I don't know. Because that's the way it goes, Kern, right? You know, sometimes you get a math problem and not all the numbers are needed. Yeah. Yeah. Throw back to computer math one. So here's so basically here's a bunch of numbers, right? But you're not gonna need them all, right? Yeah. There you go. Okay, good. Um, so that's your last quiz that was quiz nine. Um, oh yeah that's that's right Jason actually this is this is what we did so if you remember this that's great right that's what we did in computer math one right we did combinations Pascal's triangle slicing through we did a bunch of proofs too um, so if that's all coming back to you now in full color that's great um, so last quiz and the quizzes are going to be best eight of nine okay so there there are a couple of you for whatever reasons you missed one quiz 
Um, that will be the one that doesn't count, and I'll count your best eight. Um, the only other evaluations we have left are, there are the, the quiz meetings. There's still one, two, three groups that I have to see. Some of you have actually had all your quiz meetings, which is great. Um, so you can look up your marks for all of those. The rest of you will have one mark left for quiz meeting number four, and we're going to be doing those in the next three classes. So quiz meetings are still still there. Um, obviously, there's the test number two, but it's it's not like a final exam or anything like that. You've done an awful lot of work in the form of quizzes and quiz meetings and assignments up to this point. So test number two is only 15%, right? Um, so you've, you've already accumulated a great chunk of your final mark right now. Um, and then, of course, the last thing that I want to talk about just briefly today is assignment four, okay, the last assignment. Okay, so I'll just put some details on it uh, on the board. Basically, and so don't miss this when you're reading assignment uh, four, there's two questions, answer one, okay? I do realize that um, at the end of term, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I don't want to give you an assignment like our first one, which basically had a whole bunch of things you had to do because it was a long sort of progression from the start to end, right? So I basically picked two disconnected topics. Um, one was the knapsack attack, right? So here's knapsack attack method. Okay, we're going to tap a, uh, attack a uh, or break a knapsack cipher. And the other one was a Pratt primality certificate, right? No, no connection between the two other than they're both in cryptography, right? That's it. Um, so the first one, if you choose to do it, it would be insane to do it manually. So I'm assuming everyone's going to use uh, some sort of programming technique. So let's constrain that so I don't get things submitted to me, you know, in C or Java or whatever. Um, we're going to make it all Python, all Jupyter Notebook, okay? So that's your choice here for, uh, so assignment four, pick one of two. So assignment four, assignment number four, just one question, okay, one question. And if you pick the question involving the knapsack attack, you're going to be working in Python Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so if you pick the knapsack attack, it's Python Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Book. And of course, if you do the Python Jupyter Notebook, the, the way that I would prefer you submit your solution is if you just give me the HTML file, right? So if you do go with question number one, Q1, Python Jupyter Notebook and submit um, an HTML file, HTML file. Okay, and don't worry, um, I know those of you who did Crypto One with me, you know that, that when you submit it on Slate, uh, if you uh, don't, if you just submit the raw HTML Slate, when you preview it, will strip away some of the stuff. Don't worry about that. I don't grade them directly in Slate. I actually download them and open them up in my own viewer um, so I can see any additional features you put in it, okay? So even though you may have in other courses, people have said, no, don't submit a raw HTML file, I'd actually prefer you do that if you're gonna do that, right? So if you're gonna solve question one, Python Jupyter Notebook, let me see the HTML file and I'll just directly grade that, okay? Um, so do can actually go go back through it and then I can fix it and run it to correct it right if it comes down to that okay so of course you can submit additional things but but please give me that, that one. Um, so of course if you go the other way with Q2 so Q2 on this marker you just throw that out. So Q2 okay so question Q2, um, I think in this section, in the Tuesday, Thursday section, in our last assignment, no one actually did the induction question. However, in the Monday, Friday section, there were a small handful of induction Jedis who actually did pretty well on that one. 
So I'm going to keep the induction religion alive here. All right. Um, and that's going to be alive in the form of question number two. And it's the same style of induction question, except I've tightened up the constraints, right? I, I kept it really open in assignment number three, I had a more general formula and for any prime, right? Now we're going to tighten up the constraints, make it for primes that have to be greater than three. So what that allows you to do is tighten down that you can you can uh, reduce the upper bound a little bit. So there's a minus three term that kicks in there. Um, and then, of course, it becomes a little bit more challenging to play around with the proof, right? To get the proof just right. OK, um, so in this one, you're doing an induction proof two times, right? So two times induction. And of course, if you're doing two times induction, you're not using any computational methods. This is just you using the force to get a PDF file. Okay, so you're doing this manually, PDF file. Okay. So again, depending on which question you choose, you're either going to be submitting an HTML or a PDF file, right? So current says, oh no, induction is back only if you choose it, current. Only if you choose it, right? If you want to go knapsack attack and avoid induction. Again, I made that promise a couple of weeks ago, right after assignment number two, that it's going to be an option. It's still an option. Okay, so if you're against induction from for various reasons, you can continue your resistance against induction. Good. Will there be induction on the exam? Like, do we need um, to worry about that? No, that was, I remember we talked, that's a good question. We talked about that last class and basically last class I hadn't graded the other one. So I thought it might have been one of those cases where no one actually tried the induction question. And then my, my sort of, I'm tempted to say, okay, if no one's tried it yet, maybe we'll offer it up as an optional question on the test. But because there, like I said, the handful of Jedi's actually cleaned that one up. Uh, so it is now gone. I've ratcheted up, but I have a feeling that those students who did it last time are gonna take this one again, um, and it will probably be gone. So most likely no, right? So hard deal, most likely no. Well, tell the other class I said thank you. Yeah, you tell them, tell them, uh, yeah, tell them. All right. <laughs> you appreciate, right, the effort. So I really go. do, yeah, thanks. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, so Iman says, what if we don't know Python, but we like to complete question one? How, um, I didn't know that that was possible. Uh, Iman, how, uh, how can you be in, uh, I don't know, I'll have to think about it, but I didn't believe that that was possible at this point in the um, security program. You do not know Python by the time we got to, but I guess if you never did it in crypto one, yeah, you can do it in, so James saying you can do it in another language, but now I open up the, now I'm gonna have to open up the can to, Oh boy, I don't know. Uh, let me think about that one, Iman. Let me think about it. Because I have given you an, another another option, right? So I'm not quite sure what to do with that one there. My assumption actually was that everyone knows Python. Um, maybe that wasn't right. I don't know why, yeah. Um, let's say, okay. So let's say, um, so let's, so how about this, Eman? Send me an email and I'll send you a personal response. Just so, right, yeah. Okay, so send me an email and we'll, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll answer you in writing, but just you, not in front of everyone here, okay? Because <laughs> that'll help sort of, you know, and maybe, uh, I, I actually like to know, um, Anyways, let's just do it, do it that way, okay? Uh, because most of the students, I'm just looking at at the list here. I know most of you from from at least Crypto One, and I know that you can do Python. So I, I know that it's only maybe a small set of subset of students, possibly just one, that have this limitation with Python, okay? So if you do have a limitation with Python, send me an email and we'll work something out. But it'll have to be on a one, uh, you know, uh, special case by case basis. This is what I'm saying, okay? Yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, so, some, here's some some strategies then, right? Uh, so the very first question, if you are going to do it, and also there's some some multiple choice questions that are based on uh, the finding a trapdoor pair. So if you're doing question number one, 
Okay, so if you're doing question number one and finding a trapdoor pair, trapdoor pair. Okay, so we call them the trapdoor pair. Um, we've talked about this. We talked about this one or two weeks ago. But when I say a valid trapdoor pair, um, the thing, the most important thing that your trapdoor pair U and uh, V inverse, U and V inverse, must be able to do is, is to transform the trapdoor set A into a super increasing set. Okay, so the, for it to be a valid trapdoor pair, the most important thing is that when you construct S prime, it must be super increasing. Super increasing. And it may also be a permuted super increasing set, okay? So don't just apply a naive super increasing test that says for the first thing in the list, is it less than the second thing? For the first two things in the, in the list, is the sum of that less than the third thing? Okay, you may, I mean, we've been doing questions like this in our individual meetings, but you may have to apply a sort and then apply that test. Okay, so it's super increasing and may be permuted. May permuted. Okay, so that's the, the most, the objective of the trapdoor pair is to find that, right? There's some other things to consider um, in terms of the validity of your trapdoor pair. Um, the one, the one other thing you want to look for is that U must be greater than the sum of all the things in the sequence, right? So basically, when you pick U, it must be greater than the sum of all the elements in S prime. Okay, so I'm sort of writing it in Python notation here, but this would be the sum, <clears throat> sum of I is equal to 1 to N ball SI prime, where SI prime is an element of S prime. Okay, so the sum of that array, right, you have to be using um, an overall modulus that's greater than that. Otherwise, you're introducing too many loops, right? Otherwise, your modulus will not be doing what it's supposed to, right? So that's one of the things and there's one other thing that it turns out it's not really a critical part of being a trapdoor pair. I'll call it condition three star. That you can actually, it's kind of, you can cheat and you can get away with this. But the third condition um, is that you should have that U and V are relatively prime. Sorry, U and V and V inverse are relatively prime. You should have, should that the GCD is equal to one. And then the reason why I say you should is it's just good form if you're gonna come up with a transformation that takes some um, set A into a super increasing set that you have the ability to transform it back, right? If the GCD is not equal to one, it is truly a one-way function you're applying and you'll never be able to go back from it. So in other words, if you were to give this S prime as a result of using a U and V inverse, right? And you didn't have the recording of the original trapdoor set A, you wouldn't be able to prove that you found yourself a valid inverse, right? However, if your U and V inverse um, were, sorry, if, you, if, if these two are relatively prime, then obviously there's gonna be an inverse for the inverse, which is just V, and you can reverse your work to actually return the given S prime, you can, uh, you can show that a is in fact equal to whatever you started off with, okay? Um, now that's not necessarily for functionality here. So we'll say should, okay? So it should have, but doesn't have to. Does not have to, if you're just doing an attack, okay? If you're just doing the attack, the knapsack cipher attack, and all you care is the truly one way trip from A to S prime, then you can go ahead and, and you don't have to add that to it, okay? So um, when we had Cynthia, she specifically preferred us to not use Python. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, well, that's everyone's preference, right? But uh, I, I would prefer, and I'm actually putting it in writing, that you only use, <laughs> only use Python. Yeah. 
So I don't know. I think in, in Cindy's defense, it's uh, it's because Cindy didn't, uh, I, she wasn't comfortable with Python either, right? So she'd rather use one of the um, uh, more established languages like, like C or Java or something like that, right? So I know that others, so there's, um, you know, Jacob Chidorsky is doing Crypto One and Jacob doesn't care, right? Jacob's a programmer. So, you know, you use whatever language you want and you, he doesn't care, right? So you use whatever obscure language you can cook up and all great. Uh, but for me, I'm more of on the math side, right? I'm kind of a street level programmer. Uh, so I have my skills in other languages are kind of crummy and uh, my least crummiest language is Python right now. So I prefer to stick to that one. Yeah, yeah do it in touring. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. So I have a question. Sure. Um, in the assignment question number one for the knapsack attack, yeah. Um, what's the mod value then? Like, I don't, you're saying U comma V inverse? Like, That's it. In, in the knapsack attack, all you're given, so you're given A, right? All I gave you is A. Okay. So you get the original, you get the public key and that's it. You're not, you don't know what U and V were used, right? So you have to find a U and V inverse. And the way that you do that is you're also, so you're given A, I lied a little bit, and you're also given the ratio ratio of V inverse over U. Okay, mm -hmm. so in other words, the inverse that I used and the U, the modulus that I used, when I compute their ratio, I gave that to you, right? So the point of oh. finding any trapdoor pair is you can actually come up with a super increasing set using a U and V inverse that aren't exactly the same as the ones that I used, right, to create this trapdoor um, set A but they must have approximately the same ratio. Okay, you don't have to have exactly the same ratio, but they must be approximately come out to the same ratio when you divide V inverse by U. Got it. Okay, um, so when you do that again, the, 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 the sensible way to do that is to pick some appropriate bounds for you such that you have, you meet all these um, conditions and then use the ratio once you've defined what u is if you want to figure out where approximately your v inverse should be just multiply u times v inverse over u right so take wherever you want to start with in terms of a u right it could be a randomly generated number multiply it by the ratio that'll give you a starting point for v inverse and then you start moving that around right randomly systematically it's up to you you're going to find that it's much much faster than the other method which is the brute force method so when you're finding a trapdoor pair, this should be a very, very quick thing. If you find computationally it's taking more than a couple of seconds, check your code. There's something wrong going on there, right? Um, if you get down to the, the second part of that, um, uh, that question number one, where you, again, you have a choice whether you want to use brute force or fast, right? Um, if you're pretty confident in your ability of having found the trapdoor pair, you can just use the trapdoor pair method with the greedy algorithm and it'll be over like that, right? So you'll run that, the greedy algorithm will be so fast and you'll get your, um, uh, you'll get your binary, which you can compute, uh, compute the message, right? And see what the message was, All right? Um, if for some reason that's not working for you, you can always brute force it. But the brute force method for this uh, will take I, at 26 bits at a 26 item list to solve subset, subset sum. Um, on my machine was taking upwards of about a minute using brute force, right? So start running it and depending on the speed of your machine, expect to wait anywhere between a few seconds and maybe a couple of minutes, right? Shouldn't take hours or anything like that, but it is going to, um, uh, yeah. So if you have a faster machine, right, a faster, faster machine, it's going to, it's going to, uh, do it much faster. Um, uh, but I haven't set it up to be, it's, it's very feasible. It's not computationally infeasible at 24 bits, right? 256 bits, that would be a different story. But at 24 bits, uh, 26 bits, it's fine. Okay. Um, so that's good. If you want, to, maybe we'll just do, I'll just do two things because I'm running out of time here a little bit. Um, I'll give you a starting point. If you, if you do want to do that brute force method, um, there's many, many ways to solve the subset sum problem, but one of the best is the actual, just a, a mathematical way. So I'll show you how to do that in Python really quickly here. Um, I just need to open up the terminal window. And uh, 
comment bubble here. Perfect. Python 3. Okay, here we go. Um, so, and in case you can't see that, we'll zoom in. So, IDER tools is really useful when you're mapping out, when you want to know all the different combinations or permutations of something. So, IDER tools is a good thing to use. And the actual um, command is um, IDER tools dot combinations. Okay. And the way that it works is you give it a set. So let's give it the numbers um, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, or something like that. And we'll say, I want to know all the combinations. I want to know all the pairs of the numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So I want all pairs. OK. And when you run that, um, oh, we need to get it in list format. Let's list it. Where's the list? So here you have all these. So again, I have one, two, three, four, five, right? Elements in my list. And I want to know how many combinations there are of two of those. I should expect five choose two, right? So five choose two, of course it's 10, right? So five choose two, I can expect 10 combinations. Here's the thing about IDER tools, is it actually gives you the combinations, right? So if you want to say, calculate it, sums of those, which is, the whole subset sum problem, right? It's giving you all the possible pairs. So you could say, let this be equal to, I don't know, um, some list and you could sum the things on your list, right? So if temp is equal to this, and if I wanted to say um, for X in temp, I wanted to see all the sums, right? I could print, I, and you wouldn't print it, but you'd save this information, print sum of X. Right, and you'll get the sum. So basically, we should see the numbers um, three, five, nine, etc. Right. So there's our th these would be our sums. Right. So these will be the sums of every pair of elements in this list. And now it, it's immediately obvious how you're going to go about mapping all the possible subsets and solving the subset sum problem. So iterate through all the possible values of pairs, triples, quadruples, five tuples, six tuples, etc all the way up to all 26 of them, right? You're going to have a list consisting of all the possible sums. One of those sums is going to be the answer, right? One of them is. But there's, at 26 items, you're at least looking at a couple 10, 20, 60 million or so sums that you have to investigate. That's why it'll take a while, okay? So I'll post this as, um, I'll post this as, what is the date today? April... April 8th, um, IDER tools, tools demo. Okay, so I'll um, I'll put this on site for those of you who, uh, who missed it. And just, just to give you an idea of a, a quick way to get started on the brute force sum set sum problem, um, if for some reason the greedy algorithm is buggy, right? So we'll do that. Um, the other thing, so that, that's that's my, my hint or my, my sort of startup hint for question number one. Those of you who are thinking about it, and don't be, I know, I know many of you induction, you're, you're, you're just going to look away and you can't look away. And those, some of you are curious how to solve it, right? Remember induction is nothing but a process, right? It's the, um, the basis step, the hypothesis and the inductive step, right? So you can actually get most of your marks, 60% of your marks are going to come from just following protocol, right? It's of course the remaining marks where you have to do the tricks. I'll even show you right now where the trick is, okay? So you saw it here first. The trick, if you want to know where the trick is for the induction question, it is, right, let's just close that up. Okay, it's right. Uh, it's not in here. It's in our, here it is in the resources. So if you look at the resources for prime certificates, My hint is that on this page right here, okay? So the hint is if you're looking for a trick to navigate that final induction question, you're thinking about doing it, but you're not sure. My hint is the trick is here. So basically Pratt, who likes to show off, did what is essentially 10 lines of work in three lines, right? So 
my hint is that all the tricks you need to solve that problem, both instances of the problem I gave you on assignment four are here. They're here on this page, okay? Um, if you don't see it or if that doesn't interest you, forget about it, just do question one, right? You can live your life not having done induction. But again, if those of you are really, really curious about how to actually break through that induction problem, the, the, the procedure is well known, right? It's those three steps. The tricks are right there, okay? So the tricks are there too. Okay, um, so Jamie has bonus marks. Uh, so Jamie, it comes down to this, right? Whenever I, whenever it's an answer one question or the other, um, I'm going to grade. So technically speaking, I'm going to grade the first question that you give me an answer to, right? Now, you know, as a human, that I'm still going to read that second question, right? And as a human, I'm not always going to do what I say, okay? So let's leave it at that, is that technically the first question that you give me is the one that's graded, right? But I do read on. It's not like after that point I go, nope. Yeah. So Jamie understands what we're trying to say here. <laughs> okay. Good. So any other questions or issues about it? Don't forget, uh, we have another class next week on um, on Tuesday. We'll be doing our very last crypto system, the McLeese crypto system, right? Um, and then we are going to have um, a review session, right? So a week from now, we'll do our review. And your, your assignment still won't be due at that point, right? Your assignment is due the Wednesday of the last week. So basically, you'll have done everything in this course, including the last test before <clears throat> this, um, this assignment's due. So you have plenty of time to work on it. And then if, you, if you're getting stuck, you can ask me during any of the classes. We still have classes to talk about, it, okay? Uh, but I just wanted to give you some pointers to make sure you get off on the right foot. Nothing's worse than starting off in the wrong direction and realized I've been working on this assignment for a day. I've gotten nowhere. It's because I went the wrong way, right? So that's why I just uh, gave that, that thing there. Okay. Um, so um, any other questions? Questions, issues? Um. When's the exam? Is it on the 20th or is it on the Thursday class? It is on the Tuesday class on the 20th, I believe. Okay. So it will be the one we have a Tuesday, April 20th at uh, 9 a.m., right? Okay. So, and can you do us a favor? Can you make the assignment due on the 22nd on the class or not possible? Because it's due on the 21st. It's due so on the 21st, wondering. yeah. Yeah. But can you give us oh. like an extra deadline? um the reason why so yeah yeah the usually so I would other have made assignments it, as well yeah i would have made it so that's actually so it's an administrative reason why i made it due on on wednesday normally i last night when i was posting it i first made it due on friday the very last possible day and then i realized no what am i doing to myself because then three days later it's monday so you could be um you could be uh, submitting it on monday um, the uh, Monday at 11.59, and my grades are due on Tuesday morning, right, or Tuesday afternoon or something ridiculous like that. So I had to set it up so that I have enough time to grade it and get all the tests done so I can get my grades in. Uh, so it's purely administrative. So I guess the answer, hard deal, is I, I pushed it as, as late as I possibly can. Um, and that's why, and that's why I basically made it just one question, right? Uh, because no I realized I only gave you exactly two weeks to work on it. You didn't get a little bit more. Um, so if you are going to submit it late, uh, you have to get it in by Friday at 11.59, the very last possible minute. And then I have to be able to grade them all and get uh, get the grades out. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so my answer is, my answer is no, but I hope you can appreciate why is I can't, the, as soon as I make it any later than Wednesday night, then all of a sudden, um, after three days, if something, you know, if there's any uh, reasons why I'm getting them late that runs into when I when my grades are immediately due okay and uh, I don't want that to happen so okay but you have a lot of time you have two weeks right single question I imagine many of you if you start working on it now uh, will probably have it ironed out within a day or two right and that's just a matter of um, if you encounter any issues uh, we can talk about those during the classes that are coming up over the next two weeks sound good yeah, thanks. Okay, good. Um, any other questions?
Okay, great. Um, so those of you who have your um, your meetings, uh, our meetings are going to start. Uh, well, we're a little bit. We're, it looks like we're running about six, seven minutes late. Um, but I think it's Saad, uh, Megan, Kevin, Clinton. So you guys are up first, and uh, we'll see you in a minute. Um, and the rest of you, we'll see you next week on Tuesday. All right, take care. <laughs>